Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a crucial technique in risk management and quantitative finance more broadly, which is multivariate or multidimensional Monte Carlo simulation. We have already investigated how to undertake Monte Carlo simulation with one variable in one of our oldest videos on the channel, so please check this out if you're interested in the simplest case. However, sometimes, especially if we are dealing with portfolio simulations or if we are dealing with valuing complex products such as basket options or basket credit default swaps uh, or the like, you might need to simulate several variables at once. And obviously, just undertaking three separate Monte Carlo simulations using any distribution of your choice and uh, using some amount of historical data on your assets or any time series of your liking. So for example, here we have got daily returns for stocks, bonds, and real estate in the US for the past year, from October 2021 until September and 2022. Well, the problem here would be that in the real world, those variables are correlated. And if you do independent Monte Carlo simulations for each of them, then your result would be uncorrelated. That will fail to capture many dependencies that you actually care about when, for example, valuing basket options. So here we'll investigate how to do a correlated Monte Carlo simulation uh, effectively, how to correlate those independent simulations so that the result uh, has the desirable properties we observe in historical data. So first of all, let's calculate some uh, common characteristics of our time series, which are just average returns for stocks, bonds, and real estate here, as well as their volatilities or standard deviations, again, using the simple SDV.S. And perhaps what's most important, we'll need to see what the correlation structure is. What is the correlation matrix between those three daily return series? And today I'll show the index method. Again, we have applied it multiple times in prior videos. The idea is to calculate the correlation of any uh, pairs of arrays we've got in this particular matrix. And here the labeling, the numbers over here are relevant for indexing. So we can apply the index function. First, we select the first row, locking it throughout, and refer to the first index variable here, locking the row. Then we need another index function that would refer to the very last row of our historical data over here that also needs to be locked. And then we'll have to duplicate that referring to the different indicator variable or index variable over here. Again, as a sanity check, this should be equal to 1, as that's the correlation of stocks with stocks, correlation of time series 1 with time series 1. And then we can drag it across and down, seeing that the correlation matrix is indeed symmetric. We have got quite low correlations of stocks with bonds or real estate. However, quite tight positive correlations between bonds and real estate markets. And that can be interpreted in a number of ways. And the, perhaps the most relevant and the most obvious is that over the past year, um, market movements have been caused by inflation expectations and monetary policy changes. And these are quite pressing for both corporate bond and real estate markets. And that's why they have been moving in unison pretty much with a quite a high positive correlation coefficient over the past year. So how to actually incorporate this correlation matrix in our Monte Carlo simulations. Well, you cannot just incorporate it directly. What you need rather is the Kalatsky decomposition of this correlation matrix. And later on, we'll be able to combine the Kalatsky decomposition of the correlation matrix and a set of uncorrelated Z stats or any simulated statistics of your liking to produce 
necessary correlated returns. So for the Kalecki decomposition, we have got a separate video that investigates the procedure in quite a bit of detail. Here I'll show you the simple case of a 3x3 matrix that is relevant for this particular correlation matrix. So first of all, the Kalecki decomposition matrix is lower triangular, which means that everything above the diagonal, meaning these three cells in this 3x3 matrix, need to be filled with zeros. And non-zero elements will be concentrated here, on the diagonal and below the diagonal. That's why it's called a lower triangular Kalecki decomposition. And the property of the Kalecki decomposition is that if you multiply the lower triangular decomposition onto the upper triangular decomposition, so basically the transpose of that, you will get the original matrix back. So again, conceptually, the easiest way to explain what Kalecki decomposition is, uh, that is the matrix square root, basically. So let's start. The very first element on 1, 1 is the easiest to calculate. It's just the square root of the 1, 1 element of the original matrix, and unsurprisingly, it's just equal to 1. Then the first column is also pretty easy to fill in. Those are just the original elements that are situated in the respective places, on the respective positions, divided by the first element, the 1, 1 element of the decomposition matrix we have already calculated. So that means that the first column, in the case of a correlation matrix, will be absolutely identical. Then, for the 2, 2 element, we need to take the square root of the 2, 2 element, the diagonal element of the original matrix, minus basically a squared sum of all decomposition matrix elements that are on the left-hand side of it. So here we just got the 1 element, the uh, 2, 1 element. That would result in a 0 0.9997 in uh, this place, in this position, in the decomposition matrix. And then here we'll need to uh, calculate the 3, 2 element, and that's perhaps the most challenging of them all. We'll have to subtract from the uh, original matrix element situated at the same place the product of the elements that are neighboring in the uh, decomposition matrix. So 3, 1 and 2, 1. As it's a 3, 2 element, we combine 3, 1 and 2, 1. This formula shows it more generally. And finally, we divide it by the diagonal element uh, in the decomposition matrix situated in the same column. That results in a 3-2 uh, element we have got here. And finally, for the 3-3 three, three element, we take the square root of the original uh, matrix element on the same position minus the sum of squares of everything that's to the left of it. So minus this element squared and minus this element squared, which results 0 0.7398 on the 3, 3 position in the decomposition matrix. And what is quite relevant is that if we multiply the Kalecki decomposition matrix on the right by the transposed of it, so lower triangular onto upper triangular, we will get the original correlation matrix back. If we compare these two matrices, we'll be able to see that those are indeed identical. And that means that the decomposition has been made properly. Now, for the uh, Monte Carlo simulation uh, in particular, we first have to generate three independent series of simulated Z stats. And again, you can use any distribution you'd like here. We'll just stick with the normal distribution that's the most commonly used. Don't feel restrained by it. Feel free to use any distribution you like again. So here, we'll use the uh, standard inverse normal distribution of a random probability. And a random number between zero and one, basically a random probability, can be extracted using a rand function. Again, the rand function has no arguments, but as it's a function, you need to put empty parentheses uh, after the specification. So that allows us to generate um, uncorrelated Z stats for all three series, and then we can correlate them together, imposing the necessary correlation structure by using the Kalecki decomposition matrix we have just obtained. However, here there is another trick. As that's a lower triangular decomposition, we'll need to multiply it on the left. So that should be on the left of our product. 
and this does not necessarily work given our matrix dimensions. So here we need to implement a bunch of transpose functions. So first of all, we multiply the lower Gladsky decomposition onto the transposed matrix of uncorrelated Z stats. And then we transpose the result to maintain the original shape. And that spits out a matrix of correlated Z stats. And finally, we can use them to retrieve our simulated correlated returns. We can use the average return, lock in the row as its asset class specific, basically, plus the relevant Z stat times the relevant volatility. Again, for volatility and average, rows are locked, columns are not. For the correlated Z stat, we don't need to lock anything. Imposing it throughout, we get our Monte Carlo simulation that has the desired property of being correlated with correlations taken from this particular matrix. And to verify that the uh, correlations in our simulation are indeed close to the ones that we uh, wanted to obtain, bear in mind they'll never be absolutely identical because of the randomness involved in a multivariate Monte Carlo simulation, just as in a case of any Monte Carlo simulation uh, to start with, uh, we'll be able to just see it qualitatively, whether those correlations are similar. So here I have just copied the formula here and we'll adjust it accordingly to make sure that we have got the desired structure in place. I'll simply update this formula, dragging the cell references across to the simulated returns, not the historical returns. And having completed that, I'll be able to drag this around to see the correlation structure we obtained. And what we see is that with every action we take in Excel, our or the random uh, simulations are updated. We can indeed see that qualitatively the results are the same. We have got a negligible correlations for stocks with bonds and stocks with real estate and a high positive correlation with uh, between bonds and real estate. And uh, there is a trick in Excel in some systems that would be just F9 key, in other systems that would be Fn plus F9. However, if we press that, we can update all of our simulations and see how the results change. And they always fluctuate in the region that is quite close to the historically estimated correlation structure we imposed onto our simulations. And that's all there is for multivariate Monte Carlo simulation using Kalatsky decomposition to impose the desired correlation structure onto your data in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful in the comments below. I'm making to see any first suggestions for videos in business, finance, economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.